it that of soldier, educator, or statesman. Born and reared in modest surroundings, his first memories could be those of a hundred million other Americans. Many, many of us could feel at home in Ike's boyhood room, could show similar family tintypes, and duplicate this record of happy school days. While a world whose liberty he saved may be thankful, he chose West Point to start his career, a career that flowered in victory over Rommel in the deserts of North Africa, the first major allied triumph in World War II after a nightmare of defeats. Sharing the laurels of this moment with Britain's gallant Montgomery, General Eisenhower displayed the understanding that brought about his selection to lead the crusade in Europe. Ike becomes the architect of victory in Europe, the inspiring figure that conceived and executed D-Day, and the following campaign that swept the forces of Hitler to total defeat. The United Nations will gratefully remember Tedder, Montgomery, Spatz, Bradley, DeLott, Creer, and many others. But all these agree with me in the selection of the truly heroic figure of this war. He is G.I. Joe. Harris made him the man of the hour. And in London, the sorely tired populace acclaimed him. Churchill's trust was vindicated. His own people took him to heart. His radiant assurance, his pleasing modesty. New York simply can't do this to a Kansas farmer boy and keep its reputation for sophistication. Battle-weary GIs in Florida thought it natural when he came among them for checkup that found him hale and hearty. And even as you and I, Ike shared with Mrs. Eisenhower the satisfaction of becoming grandparents, feeling nothing is greater than the simple fact a child is born. Eisenhower's for another generation to keep the Smiths, Jones, and Browns company. They are the children of his only son. A brilliant, vigorous, Dwight D. Eisenhower is a man in any club. Leader in civilian life as president at Columbia, Ike championed the cause of freedom. In today's struggle, no free man, no free institution can be neutral. All must be joined in a common profession that of democratic citizenship. But the threat of communist aggressions again called on General Eisenhower's genius for getting things done. And in one short year, as supreme commander of shape, he did what no statesman before him could ever do. From Norway to Greece and Turkey, he made allies of old enemies, made the dream of a United States of Europe a realizable fact. We here at shape, representatives of many nations, work day by day, constantly, with these intricate and difficult problems. We require faith, self-confidence, devotion, tenacity, always tenacity. At home, meanwhile, his own people clamored for his leadership. Shocked by disclosures of corruption, they now called on Ike to return. In demonstrations unique in politics and in primary elections, they issued a clear-cut call that could not be denied. Senator Lodge carried the message. And Ike, now assured that the foundation for European solidarity was well set, said goodbye to the organization that remains a lasting monument to his skill for handling critical situations. So, entering the presidential race, he again parts company with old comrades. Comrades in arms and my friends, the uniformed services of the United States are far too deeply embedded in my heart for me ever to say a final goodbye. I hope you will allow me to say, until we meet again. The boy who went forth to battle returns to Abilene, Kansas, and the scenes of his childhood, the most notable figure of his time. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we can have peace with honor, reasonable security with national sovereignty. I believe in the future of the United States of America. <laughs> The Republican National Convention at Chicago recognized the voice of the people and made Ike the leader of still another crusade. I take up this task, therefore, in the spirit of deep obligation, mindful of its burdens and of its decisive importance. I accept your summons. I will lead this crusade. Bivouacking beside campfires develops many skills, a useful one being how to throw together a breakfast for visitors to his vacation retreat. 
Major John Eisenhower follows in the footsteps of his father as he leaves to serve his country in Korea. His parents, a wife, and three children will miss him. But he's the good soldier, though women must weep. A man who knows responsibility and how best to shoulder it, we give you Dwight David Eisenhower. A soldier learns, as a nation must learn, that integrity, backed by strength, is the only sure way to lasting peace. Our country's destiny, to my mind, is to serve mankind through leadership in the arts of peace. If we believe in our own system, if we allow no taint of false doctrine to confuse it, if we practice what we preach, if we provide upright leadership, we can help to show the world the folly of war. With all the strength I can command and the devotion I hold for my country, I pledge myself to this objective. 